Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so let's continue our foray into engineering drawings um, and have a look at assembly drawings. Now, some of the content in here um, I've already covered in the um, in the the sample drawing I did uh, using Fusion. Um, I discussed some of the some of the points that I made here um, and definitely showed you how to do the things that we're going to talk about here in Fusion. But, um, you know, this this lecture is going to provide a little bit more background, a little bit more detail, um, and will definitely be more helpful uh, in terms of the, uh, the the midterm exam. OK, so uh, so so let's get started with uh, assembly drawing. All right, so an assembly drawing is essentially a part of a working drawing set. OK, so remember, a, a working drawing set is a set of drawings that are used to uh, describe um, every part and the assembly of those parts to make a machine or mechanism. OK, um, and the description of that of those parts are called the detail drawings, right? And the assembly drawing is the description of the assembly of those parts to form the machine or mechanism. OK, the parts are uh, covered. The, the detail drawings of the parts are uh, intended to be used for manufacturing those parts. Um, and the assembly drawing for, for the most part is, is not for manufacturing the assembly. Right. Because we don't really typically manufacture an assembly. Typically, what we do is we assemble it. So um, so so an assembly drawing can be geared or lean towards an assembly practice. That's why you see some exploded assembly drawings and stuff. We'll, we'll talk about all that. OK, so um, so, you know, a working drawing set is going to have all the detail drawings of each part, the bill of material um, of each part um, and the assembly drawings. The primary function of an assembly drawing, right, turning our attention to this specific topic assembly drawings the primary function of an assembly drawing is to show the product in its completed state or shape indicate the relationship of its various components to each other and designate these components by part number okay secondarily we can um, have some dimensions on an assembly drawing it's not typical but they can be uh, you know, included in an assembly drawing. And these include like an overall dimension, capacity, dimensions, movement, installation dimensions. Typically, these are dimensions that you're not going to find in, um, uh, in, in the detail drawing dimensions because it might be uh, incorporating several parts, right? So a dimension, a, an overall dimension might include um, a, a whole series of parts. And so you can't really see that with the individual part dimensions. Um, the and, and also dimensions on a detail drawing are for their manufacture, right? Dimensions on an assembly drawing are so that you can um, understand how the assembly is going to work or you can determine sizing for the assembly, okay? Um, additionally, you know, you might have assembly instructions, some kind of operating characteristics and, and other instructions. Okay. Here's an example of a assembly drawing. Okay. So let's look at the three ingredients in an assembly drawing. Number one, we have the assembly views. All right. And typically this is going to be a one view or two view kind of drawing. All right. Um, it's rare that you would need more than two views for an assembly drawing. And in fact, many assembly drawings are shown with just a single view. OK. In this case, we do have two views. These views, of course, are orthographic. So we're still going to obey all the rules for orthographic projection, you know, alignment of views, two dimensional, all that good stuff. The second ingredient is part balloons and the part balloons. Think of these as linking the assembly itself, the views to the third ingredient, the bill of material. So the part balloons are going to point to individual parts and call them out with a part number. And finally, the third ingredient is the bill of material and the bill of material is a listing of all the parts necessary to put one assembly together. 
okay? So it includes a, um, the, the part number, the name for each part, uh, what the drawing might be that uh, the detail drawing number that would have that uh, individual part drawing, the number of required parts in the assembly, and then possibly some other um, information like the material, uh, you know, uh, a description, things like that. Okay, so those are the three ingredients to a standard assembly drawing. The views, the part balloons, and the bill of material. There are several different types of assembly drawings. Okay, so the one that we see in, working, in a working drawing set, the one that is the standard in engineering drawings for, uh, you know, machines and mechanisms is a design assembly drawing. All right. Um, it's going to consist of orthographic views of the assembly. It's going to consist of bill of material and part identification balloons. Um, it may include other views for clarity, such as enlarged views or section views. Then we have a installation assembly drawing. Um, these are typically used for unskilled workers or employ or um, for that are employed for mass assembly of parts, right? So you can clearly see how the parts are going to be arranged and assembled, right? This is what we call an exploded view, all right? It doesn't have to be an exploded view, but typically we're talking about an exploded view here. Uh, the exploded view may be or either orthographic or isometric. Notice this is an isometric exploded view. The bill of material may be replaced with direct part callout. So instead of, you know, a 41 or a 57 right here, we might put in the name for the part block and pin or set screw, things like that. Okay. Then we have assembly drawings for catalogs. All right. So uh, a catalog is going to have an assembly drawing so that the consumer can see what they're getting. Um, it also provides a, a, a way to give dimensions so that the consumer can make sure that they're getting the right um, machine, right? Um, if there's a table with these dimensions, then you can see the different uh, styles and types of this is a speed reducer, so the speed reducer, okay? Um, a uh, assembly drawing for a catalog is not necessarily a complete drawing. It only gives the information that's necessary for the consumer in this case. Okay, that may consist of exploded or orthographic views, um, and it may have relevant dimensions. A detail assembly drawing is kind of a hybrid. You don't see this often. It's really only used for simple. Um, machines or mechanisms, simple assemblies, um, and basically it's a combination of a of the detail drawings for the individual parts and the assembly drawing. Okay, so that means that the detail drawings, the 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 part drawings are in the assembly, and everything is dimensioned here. So obviously it needs to be a very simple assembly, otherwise this gets out of hand very quickly. All right, and it gets unreadable. The fifth type is a subassembly drawing, and and we you actually see this uh, quite often with complex assemblies or even you know reasonably complex assemblies, um, and and basically you have a subassembly is a assembled unit that must be put together before it goes into the larger assembly, and so therefore we have a subassembly drawing, all right? It follows the same rules as a regular assembly drawing, right? We have the parts uh, shown in an orthographic representation, usually one view or two views. We have the part callouts with balloons and bill of material. Okay. Here's some more examples. This is a rather complex assembly drawing that needs a lot of um, section views, right? These are what we call, if you remember from the section view lecture, these are what we call removed sections, right? They're section views that are removed out of orthographic alignment. So if we're trying to read this, let's look at this. This is section AA right there, right? And so where is section AA? Section AA is this, the, see that line? So this view is looking at this screw and, uh, you know, other feature from this direction. So we're looking at it from west to east, as the arrows indicate, right? We're looking at it and that's what we see right there. Okay, so section BB is here, where is BB? Same thing, 
right? So really, these section views, these these removed sections, um, are intended to show um, the the assembly of these like um, the 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 fastener areas, right? So we have a little um, a a bearing that goes in there uh, around the fastener here, same kind of thing, all right? And then we have the bill of material. All right. Um, this is uh, an example, another example of an assembly drawing. Um, what's important to note here is that uh, there, there's a lot of notes. So in, in some assembly drawings, it's required that you or it's necessary that you provide assembly instructions. So here it says um, for, for this part, it says uh, stake three screws after screwing in place. OK. Um, and this says dip in castor oil before assembling. So, so there's additional instructions in here so that you can put this together properly. Um, here's a, uh, a, a very complex drawing, something that you probably could not do by hand. You'd need a, a CAD system and a 3D model to put it together of a, uh, of a micro, uh, I think this is a microscope, um, but, uh, you know, so you can see it's an exploded isometric or pictorial assembly, right? So we can see all the different features in here. What I especially don't like about this one, if I'm going to be nitpicky, is um, the fact that there are hidden lines shown here. I don't think the hidden lines are necessary. They don't really convey any useful information other than there's surfaces behind other surfaces. So it kind of, you know, makes it a little bit hard to read. All right. But again, we still see all the ingredients here, um, the views, the balloons, the bill of material. Here's a assembly drawing that you might see in a car uh, manual. Um, this is used for a Ford truck. Right. And this is looks like the rear uh, drive. Rear drive axle or actually it's the front driving axle. Sorry, the front driving axle. Um, and. So we can forego the bill of material because we're just calling out the part numbers directly on the part, right? Um, this is also a complex part. It's an exploded orthographic, uh, excuse me, exploded pictorial assembly, right? Complex, very complex. Um, so what are some of the rules for assembly drawing? Okay, so... Typically, we are only use, using one or two views. Rarely are three views necessary. Okay. We also are going to omit hidden lines. In an assembly drawing, you omit hidden lines. Um, why? Well, if you include hidden lines, it gets very difficult to read very quickly because there's a lot of features that are hidden in assembly drawings, obviously. So we typically omit hidden lines in an assembly drawing. Section views are often necessary. Um, we do not alter section lines based on material type, but what we do is we alter uh, we, we alter section lines based on mating parts and part size. So we make them go in different directions for mating parts so that we can see one part from the other. And the cutting point line, and I mentioned this in the fusion uh, uh, video, cutting point lines are typically omitted. Right. When you think about it, the cutting point line would be very difficult to draw in an assembly drawing. OK, um, especially if you only have one view, you, you, you know, you, you, you don't have the view um, to, to put the assembly drawing, uh, put the cutting point line in. OK, so here's some examples of section lines in assembly drawings. So um, in for small, thin parts like this gasket, you can e either omit the cutting the section lines or you can show them as solid lines or solid like the solid fill. Um, for uh, mating parts like this, we want to change the angle of the section lines and change the spacing of the section lines. So small parts get tighter spacing. We do not section the following parts. You do not section shafts and axles, screws, bolts, nuts, and washers, pins and shaft keys, rivets, rollers, and spheres. So we don't section those. Even if the cutting point line cuts directly through it, we don't section those. OK, if you need to section that to show some detail that's hidden, then you would use a broken out section to expose the inner details. OK. 
There's some examples of section views in an assembly drawing. So here's one. And you can see the cylindrical part right there. That's the main shaft right there. Okay. Here's a bearing. This is a, um, a, a thrust bearing, but you can see the ball right there. The ball, that's not sectioned, right? We don't section that. Okay, the bill of material. The bill of material is also known as an item list or a parts list. And it's an itemized list of all components required to, cr to create one complete assembly of the machine or mechanism. It may be placed on an assembly drawing or on a separate drawing sheet, right? Um, companies typically have slightly different bill of material formats depending on what they need or want or feel is important to include in their bill of material. Okay, so that's often standardized within the company. Um, on the drawing, the bill of material may be placed directly above the title block or in the upper right corner opposite the title block. So here's the, the CAD standard. You know, we're not using this because we're using the Fusion standard, um, but you get the idea for the bill of material. Quantity of the parts, the part number, this is what goes in the balloon to call out the parts, the item number or the part name, the material, and then the description. Okay. Now this is important. The description is going to take one of three forms. Okay. The description for a part, if the part is a, uh, an, a, a part that's designed in house, that is, is designed specifically for the, uh, the assembly, then, um, the, the description is going to consist of the detail drawing number for that part because that part because it's designed for that assembly is going to have a detail drawing okay um, you can also have a description that is the vendor name and catalog number and this would be for purchased parts right some parts in an assembly you're just going to purchase you're not going to build them yourself and finally you're you're going to use common notation for standard purchase parts, right? These are parts that there's nothing special about them, but you are going to purchase them. And that would include fasteners, nuts, bolts, washers, things like that, screws, um, you know, uh, uh, snap rings. Um, and you're going to give the common notation for those parts. So if we look at this example right here, the base is a, uh, is a custom in-house design part. So that gets a drawing number a 3154 all right the shaft likewise would be a uh, an in-house design parts now if you look at the bearing the bearing is an skf bearing and it's number 620 um, the nut and bolt are these are standard purchase parts and so that gets a thread notation 375-16 unc by 1.5 inches long and the nut would be a 375-16 unc um all right so just some more information um fusion doesn't uh uh doesn't allow us to to change the part balloons but if you're making your own part balloons such as an autocad um, <coughs> or uh, other CAD software where you where you need to make the uh, the part balloons. There are standard sizes for the part balloons. So depending on the paper size, if you're using inch size paper A, B, and C or larger, uh, A size paper is going to get uh, or an A size drawing is going to get 11 mil or 11 millimeter or 0.44 inch balloon diameter. Text size inside the balloon is an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. Right, A4 is the metric equivalent. For B, A3, it's going to be the same. When you move up to C or larger, C size and A2, which is the metric uh, paper size, your the balloon diameter is going to be a half inch or 13 millimeters, and the text size is going to be 0.19 inches or 5 millimeters. This is inside the balloons, right? Inside the balloons, the text. Balloon, okay, this is important. Balloon leaders should not be horizontal or vertical. They should not approach horizontal or vertical. So you you want them, you know, typically you're talking about they need to be greater than 15 degrees off the horizontal or vertical. Okay. Only call out multiple instances of the same part once. So if we have 25 screws that are the same screws in an assembly, we call it out once. 
And then in the bill of material, we would say that there are 25 screws. Okay, you don't call out, you don't put 25 balloons on each screw or on the screws. Balloons should be arranged horizontally and vertically, right? Not helter skelter, randomly oriented. And balloons may be piggybacked to other balloons for connected or hard to reach parts. All right, that concludes our assembly drawing lecture. I'll see you in the next video.